It's been quite the journey moving from Mac OS to this custom Linux PC behind me. In today's video, I want to walk you through a handful of changes and upgrades that I've made to really further cement this as my main PC going forward, but also to future-proof it for years to come. In this video, I'll walk you through an AM4 to AM5 conversion of this build. I'll also walk you through my Fedora GNOME installation, the Fedora extension manager, and customizations that I went with to really make this PC my own. So let's jump right into it. To make this my primary PC going forward, I'm upgrading the core components to AM5, including a new motherboard, DDR5 RAM, and a larger low-profile cooler, all within the same Fractal TerraJade case. You can certainly swap out all of these components for various other components, depending on your needs. For the motherboard, I went with the ROG B850. For the processor, I'm jumping two generations to the AMD Ryzen 9. 9900X, moving from DDR4 RAM to DDR5 with G-Skill 32GB and the NHL 12S cooler. All of these components should fit into this case nicely, and we'll have to of course tear this down later, so stay tuned for that. Okay, now that I have the new components unboxed and ready to go on the desk, I must stress it's important to mine the space you have to work with here, ensuring proper order of installation considering the size of this cooler for example. This cooler is larger than my existing, but still low profile, providing added cooling, added peace of mind. I'll start with the 9900X processor place that aligned to the arrow in the corner and the arrow indicated on the board. Ensure that that's placed securely, then place the DDR5 RAM into the RAM slots, ensuring both 16GB RAM sticks are fully placed given they won't be easy to get to later. Easy enough those snap right into place with this board, and then again just confirm that they're nicely seated. I'll then remove the mounting brackets pre-installed on the board, as these are not required for my build given the cooler will need to be mounted to this board soon. After removing those, I'll need to add the provided cooler spacers and brackets from the NH cooler. The cooler includes two sets of brackets of your choosing. I'm going this route, and the brackets include a guide on how to install, with guides indicated on the brackets themselves also. After the brackets are installed, I'll place the cooler temporarily ensuring fit before installing the existing 1TB NVMe SSD from my current build. With all of that out of the way now though, I'll bring in the current AM4 build to disassemble. Remove the top panel and the side panels from the Fractal TerraJade case. This is super simple as you can see here, thanks Fractal for making this easy. Now we have, well, the not so easy part, we have quite a bit to disassemble assemble here and quite a bit to remove. Again, the nice thing about this case though is it's all very easy to get to and easy to navigate, so no concerns there. We do need to remove the graphics card and graphics card housing first. That's a handful of screws and again, very easy to do, but we're going to have to remove that before we get to everything else in this case. We'll be setting aside this housing and this graphics card because we will be using this going forward in my current build. I don't plan on purchasing a new graphics card just yet. Remove the screws holding down the motherboard, save the those for later, removing the motherboard completely from the case so we can get to that SSD. I will be saving this to repurpose all of these components in the future, not just tossing these. And now it's time to remove the SSD from the previous board so that way we can then reuse that in the new build. I will note, however, we will have to reinstall Linux going forward in order to properly set up the new build. Installing the existing SSD into the new build is one-to-one -one from the previous build, so it's very straightforward. Once that's completely screwed down, we're then going to move on to the cooler, add some thermal paste obviously before doing so, but then install the cooler following the guide provided from NH in the box ensuring you've properly installed this cooler, as well as using the tools that they've also provided in the box so kindly. And there we have it, the low profile cooler in low profile mode and all of the components configured on our new board. Plug in the cooler and then we're going to toss all of this in the TerraJade case. We'll connect all the cables again and then we'll also re-add the graphics card housing and the graphics card so that way we can then test to verify everything boots up. Looks pretty good for now, so let's go ahead and plug it in real quick just to make sure everything at least boots up. And right away, it's great to see that this thing has booted up. Now that it's booted up though, there's still quite a bit of work to do here to clean all of this up. I'll of course cable manage this to the best of my ability, so that way most of the cables are at least out of the way and as clean as possible with this small build. I used far less zip ties this time for a cleaner build, and overall I'm pretty happy with the cable management that we have here. We now have to reinstall the OS, and I'm gonna go with Fedora. Before doing so, there's some additional changes in the BIOS that I need to do. Obviously, I'll update the BIOS later. However, I recommend setting your DDR5 to Expo 1 or 2, and then also making sure that you set it to Eco mode, given that we're still using a smaller case with a rather powerful chipset, even though we do have the nice low profile cooler. Save those BIOS changes, and now that those are out of the way, we're going to go ahead and pick up our flash drive, which is our bootable drive for Fedora, and install Fedora. The installation is very easy and very straightforward. Once installed, you'll want to remove the drive, and then you'll want to boot up, and then 
and do all of your updates and upgrades before anything additional. A quick pseudo DNF update and upgrades will get you through most of those updates and upgrades that you need. And then don't forget about upgrading and updating your BIOS as well, following the instructions from your provided motherboard. And with all of that out of the way for me, I want to move forward to all of my customizations and extensions for Fedora that I highly recommend in customizing your desktop experience if you want a desktop experience similar to mine. First, if I jump to my initial video, I did recommend some wallpapers from another creator, which is also going to be linked here. I'll also link the details here, but you want to head over to my YouTube, copy the information there, and then jump to terminal and just paste that information into terminal. And then that will install the wallpapers that I've been using. This may take a few minutes, but once installed, navigate to the designated directory where the wallpapers were installed. In my case, pictures, wallpaper, and then here are all the wallpapers. To apply, just change the appearance, selecting the wallpaper of your choosing. I'll go with this space theme since it matches my current phone wallpaper, which you'll actually get to see here shortly, so stay tuned for that, as well as it goes with the overall aesthetic so far. Next, we're gonna navigate to the software manager so we can then install the extensions manager. Select install. Once installed, we're going to open the extensions manager and go to the browse tab, so that way we can search for specific extensions. I'm personally gonna start with the top downloaded extensions, ones that I typically use. First, installing dash to dock, which kind of gives you that Mac OS like dock, then blur my shell. And it does just that, just extending and blurring your wallpaper for a really clean setup. It looks really nice, especially paired with the right wallpaper. Next, I'll install Caffeine, an extension that keeps your machine caffeinated, ensuring that it stays awake either indefinitely or provided on a timer as long as you need. Once installed, it's really easy to toggle and manage your specific settings right from the menu here. Next is GS Connect, which is similar to KDE Connect for my mobile phone. Then there's Just Perfection, an extension that allows you to further tweak your UI and desktop experience. Disregard the pop-up unless you want to buy them a coffee. Scroll back down and then I'm going to install Vitals. I highly recommend this extension. This extension gives you a very nice clean window into your system's Vitals. Next, I'm gonna install Arc Menu. Arc Menu is a very nice clean app menu. And not only that, it's highly configurable and highly customizable. It's quick and easy to customize. Just a quick right click on the menu icon there in the top. You can then navigate to the settings and you'll see there's a handful of tabs, general, menu, etc. Again, this is highly customizable. There's plenty of options under each tab here to really dial in this app menu to your liking. You don't have to go the typical route or you could just go through every single one of these tabs and really just adjust everything you would like. Um, for me personally, I try to keep it very simple. I don't make many adjustments here. The main one though is more aesthetic. I just like the fact that right within here, you can actually change the menu button. You could even change it to like text if you don't want a button, but you can choose your own icon you can even choose a custom icon. For me to go with this space theme, I'll just go with, well, like an alien. Uh, I'll make it larger here in a second. But again, just wanted to show you the flexibility and customization you get with this extension. Next, I'm going to jump into Terminal real quick, and I'm going to do a sudo dnf install gnome tweaks, enter my password, and I'm going to then say yes and let it install. Once installed, I will jump right into this. You can customize a whole lot of your gnome experience using gnome tweaks. However, for me specifically, there's only one thing that I'm going to adjust right now, and that is specific to the keyboard. So under the additional layout options under keyboard, I'm then going to select control position, and then I'm gonna scroll down and look for an option. Swap left alt with left control, giving me the Mac OS feel on my keyboard. Now to install many of the apps that I use, starting with Caden Live. So I'm going to navigate to the software manager, search for Caden Live and install Caden Live. You can also do this from terminal. Forgot an extension that basically just moves my clock. I'll install that so that way my clock is right aligned. Going back to installing apps, I will search for Audacity and install Audacity, which I'm using to record my voiceover for this video right now, editing this entire video using this new setup. I'll install Local Send, which is basically like AirDrop for Linux. Also installing Local Send on my mobile phone as well. Everyone was asking me in my previous videos how I do some screen sharing from my phone to my Linux desktop. Well, that's screen copy, SCR, CPY which I'll leave the link to the GitHub in the description of this video. I'll go ahead and install the Linux version now, and then we'll walk through how to use this. Make sure you also have ADB installed and you've also enabled developer options and USB debugging on your device. I forgot that part, but simply putting SCR, CPY in your terminal will start screen copy. And then as you can see, I can share and access my device directly from my Linux desktop in my Fedora GNOME environment. This works on other distros, but also just wanted to note that you can also use this wirelessly, not using a cable. And that wraps up my overall Fedora setup and my extensions.
And that about wraps up today's video. If you have any questions or if you have any recommendations on Linux or distros or really anything, definitely leave a comment down below. I look forward to that conversation. Subscribe for more content coming soon on my move to Android and some of the changes there as well as the overall ecosystem that I'm actively building outside of Apple's walled garden. More to come on all of that. As always, thank you for watching. Take care and stay safe.